All right, uh, now we're gonna look at uh, one of the key concepts for vectors. So as I said, all the things we learned in vectors were really moving us towards being able to handle real life problems. Um, real life vector problems, we're gonna be using either the triangle method or the parallelogram method. I've said you guys can use whatever method you feel more comfortable with for a lot of the problems, but there are gonna be the few problems in there where if you don't understand the other method, you're gonna get it wrong. For the most part, you can choose whichever one you're comfortable with. In this case, I'm going to solve a vector problem with the parallelogram method. You could use the triangle method. I think the parallelogram method is usually slightly easier, so we're going to do that. So the first thing I need to do is set up my vector diagram. I apologize for the bright dot you probably have up here, but I'm going to set up my vector diagram using the parallelogram method. So my vectors have to be drawn in tail to tail. Uh, once I've drawn those in, I'm going to copy the vectors across to create a parallelogram, as we said. I'm going to draw in my resultant vector, and then I'm going to add the values in there, and we're going to actually calculate what everything is. Okay? So to start with, I need to go through and take these vectors you see up in the top right-hand corner, and I need to place those vectors according to the, what we were dealing with in the problem. So if you read through your problem, uh, you'll notice that the first vector is... 550 kilometers an hour towards 125 degrees. So 125 degrees is past 90. So for my first vector, I'm going to take my first vector. Um, the first direction is listed as a bearing. So starting at, at north, if I go 90 degrees this way, I'm east, and then I need to go an extra 35 degrees to get to 125. So 35 will be roughly like that. Say so that's 35 degrees, okay? First vector place. Now the second vector is blowing on a bearing of 190. So for the second vector, I'm gonna place that. Again, I'm placing them tail to tail. All right, the second vector is placed. Uh, not perfectly, let's move it a little bit. start at north, 180 degrees takes me all the way around to the, um, to the south direction. If I go an extra 10 degrees, I'm just off something like this, okay? So it needs to be at 135, it's about one fifth the size of the other vector, so it's going to be small, something like that, okay? Now that I've got both my vectors placed in parallelogram method, I need to add these other vectors that they're not vectors in themselves, they're just imaginary vectors that help me make my parallelogram. They're just a tool for solving the problem. So this one's parallel, put it in as best you can. Remember accuracy is very important here. You wanna make these as neat as you can. Um, I'm gonna adjust these a little bit lengthwise. So let's adjust the length here a little bit. There we go. So now I have my parallelogram. Um, my resultant vector, remember, when you place it in the parallelogram method, it should be where the two vectors start, to where the two vectors, uh, the two imaginary vectors meet. And the reason here is we've got one vector going southeast, and we've got one going southwest. So the two of them together, well, the one going southeast is bigger, so our result should be southeast. So there's my resultant vector. And now that I've got my diagram placed, I can start adding values. Okay, so I'll move my cursor out of the way and we'll start adding values. So in the question I'm told that the first uh, vector, there was 125 degree angle, so that's 125 degrees. Um, this is the resultant vector that we placed. I'm looking for that. Uh, I was told the angle all the way around to the other vector, so all the way around to this vector was 190 degrees, okay? It's 190 degrees all the way around to there. Uh, other things, I was told the magnitude of this vector was 550 kilometers an hour, meaning that the opposite side has to be 550 as well. And I was told that the wind here was 135 and 135. Remember this one's imaginary, okay? Uh, what other angles do I have? At this point, nothing. 
So as a quick summary of what we've done, we've set it up as parallelogram method tail to tail. I'm looking for the resultant. This represents the path of the plane with the wind. So if I add the wind, which actually is this one, to the path of the plane, this is the path the plane will take after the wind, which is pushing it like this, okay? Uh, we put in our sides, and now with what I have there, um, I want to find all the angles inside the parallelogram. And I only really need one to find all four. So this one inside here, it's 190 all the way to there, and it's 135 to there. So I know that this angle inside here is going to be 190 minus 125 is going to be that angle in there, which is 65 degrees. So this angle inside here is 65. So these two I'm going to erase, and I'm going to replace them with a 65 degree angle in here. So this full angle is 65. That means this one opposite is 65 as well. I know that all four have to add to 360, so I can go 360 minus 65 minus 65, and I'm left with 220 after that. It has to be divided evenly between these two, so I'm going to divide it by 2, and I get 100 and, uh, sorry, this one here is 230. This is 230 degrees. I'm trying to copy off another board here. 230 degrees when you subtract 65 twice, you divide that by 2, you get 115. So these two angles here in the corner are 115 degrees. Now what you can see here is even using a computer, the way I've sketched this, that's not quite 115 degrees. So bear in mind that this is a guide to help us solve the problem. It's never going to be perfectly accurate. All you want is it very clear and neat so that even if it isn't drawn perfectly to scale, all the numbers are inputted correctly so our math is reflected by that. Our math is correct when we go through and do it. So now that I've got all four angles, now I can get started with cosine law and sine law to find the things I need. I need the magnitude of the resultant vector there, r. Okay. So to find the magnitude of the result, I'm going to use cosine law. Okay. Remember with cosine law here, I've got side, angle, side. The uh, one over here, the side over here is opposite this angle. And then these two, it doesn't matter which one I make B and C. So I'm going to make 550B and 135C. Remember, those two don't matter. All that matters is that this side is opposite this angle. Minus 2 times B, C. If you're wondering what, where I got this equation, it's on your formula sheet. This is the cosine law for a side. And then it's cosine 115. If you work this out, I keep reminding people that this is a negative sign on this full term here. Minus a negative is plus. So when you add all three of these terms together, keeping in mind that minus a negative is plus, you're going to get uh, 383, uh, 483, 8119, remember to take the square root. This just gives me my magnitude. So I get a magnitude of 619.26. So now I know my resultant here is 619.26 kilometers an hour. Add units on your answers, all right? So it's in kilometers an hour. The thing is I need a direction for this. I don't have that yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find this angle here. If I find that angle there, I can just add it to this here and write my uh, direction of the plane after the wind as a bearing. So if I can find this little angle, I've got a bearing then for my answer. Remember, when you write in a direction for your answer, it needs to be either a bearing or a heading. So I'm going to use sine law for that. So in sine law, it's just if I look at this triangle here alone, this triangle right here, any angle over its opposite side is equal to any other angle over its opposite side. I want this one. 135 is opposite that angle. So I'm going to go sine theta divided by its opposite, angle, opposite side, which is 135, is equal to this angle over its opposite side. So you need to be comfortable using sine and cosine law. Uh, this side we've just figured out is 619, 26. You need to solve this equation here for theta. Remember last step, you have to take the inverse 
sine to get theta out, you're going to find that theta is uh, 11.4 degrees. So that little angle there is 11.4 degrees. Remember as a bearing, I want from north. So from here all the way to my result vector. Remember in the question it told us that from here to here was uh, 125 degrees. So from here to here was 125 degrees. And from here to here is just 11.4. So to get that whole angle there, I just got to add 11.4 to 125. So I'm going to go uh, 125 plus 11.4 degrees to get my bearing. And that comes out to 136 degrees, roughly, 136.4. I'm going to round it down to 136. So 136 degrees. I don't need any north, south, east, west stuff here because I'm choosing to represent my angle as a bearing. Okay? So as a summary of what we did, and there is a lot to these problems. They are difficult. Something like this where you have to draw all the angles and uh, all the sides in, that is a higher level problem. It is going to be challenging. But it's very doable. All you need to do first is be very careful to draw a detailed, neat vector diagram. You really want to put in the effort there. If the diagram is drawn correctly, from there, you're going to use cosine and sine law. You're almost always going to use cosine law to find the magnitude of your resultant vector. And you're almost always going to use sine law to find your bearing or heading. Okay? So this is an example of parallelogram method. If you're comfortable with that, use it. Remember I said you need to understand triangle and parallelogram method, but if you're more comfortable with one of the two, in cases like this, you can use it.